Welcome into the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. My name is Jarrett Samuels. I'm the host of the podcast. As always, men, I want to thank you for stopping by checking out today's show. If this is your first time here, uh, make sure you visit thepursuitofmanliness.com. There you'll find this podcast episode. You'll find our social media links. You'll find ways to sign up for the email newsletter, our tribe store, a resource called Point Man, designed to help you lead spiritually within your home. And you'll find out about tribe. We currently have our registration for tribe open, but only for about 12 to 13 more days at the time of posting this podcast. Registration for the next session of Tribe ends Saturday, May 22nd, with the session beginning on June 1st. This is 2021, just in case you're watching this in the future. Saturday, May 22nd, 2021, registration for the next session of Tribe ends. That session runs June 1st till the end of November. The men in Tribe are high character, high caliber men. You hear me say this all the time. We've been sharing videos and testimonies from these guys for the past several weeks to allow you to get a glimpse of this is who they are. But maybe even more importantly, we've been sharing some testimonies for what their wives have said as well. I think that's the greatest testament to what these men are doing with Tribe and they're bringing it within their sphere of influence. On today's podcast, uh, we have Patrick Morley on the show, and I'm excited for this for a couple reasons. One, Patrick wrote this book, How God Makes Men, 10 Epic Stories, 10 Proven Principles. The first reason why I'm excited for this is this, to me, is, is the heart of what happened when God stirred in me that I needed to grow and mature as a man of God. I went back to the Word of God. I started looking at what God was doing in specific men's lives in the Bible and asking myself, okay, do I see that in my life? It's the same Almighty on His throne. It's the same Holy Spirit available to me. What am I doing with that? The second reason why I'm excited about this is in Tribe right now, uh, we gave 80 men in this last session the opportunity to go through this book, to have intentional conversations about it, to have challenge videos that were wrapped around it, to really take a look at what is God doing in my life and what needs to change? There are things in all of our lives that we need to repent of, we need to move on from, ways that we need to mature. One of the best ways of doing that is to get in the Word of God. We say often we want to be men of God in the Word of God being changed by the presence of God. Well, another way that you sharpen that is get around other guys who are doing the same. Amen? Well, guys, it's time for Patrick Morley. Let's get on with the show. Well, at this time, I want to welcome Pat. Morley to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. Pat, thank you for taking time and being on the show with us today. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, it's it's an honor for, for me as well, as we talked about just a moment ago. And I said in the intro of this podcast that one of the things that happened in me when I got reawakened, if you will, about being a man of God was getting in the Word of God and learning from the men from Scripture. And that's uh, what we've been talking about in Tribe, we're talking about this podcast, your book, How God Makes Men. I know you're an author, wrote several books, and got a new one coming out today. Yeah, you got one too. How about that? <laughs> um, man, I, first and foremost, uh, what caused you to, to write a, a book like this? Well, my, I, I'm really a one trick pony, Jared, and men's discipleship is my trick. I can so I can talk to you about anything you want to talk to uh, uh, to me about today, as long as it's men's discipleship. <laughs> I love it. So, so um, I uh, I have a a a passion, a, a God given passion. I believe there's an urgent necessity to help men become godly men, husbands, and fathers. And so, I, I wanted to take. Uh, I did this study at our. Friday morning Bible study. We have this Friday morning Bible study we've been doing since 1986, continuously. Did this series called How God Makes Men and took uh, 10 epic stories out of the Old Testament and then looked for the, okay, well, what is the one central idea or the big idea, like I prefer to call, what's the big idea about this central character? And then, uh, it went over so well with the guys in the live sessions that it went ahead and decided to put it into a book. And I heard you went through it, huh? We did. We we have a, a discipleship community called Tribe, and uh, we we are just wrapping it up the, the the month of May. Some guys they read ahead their show offs, but they love the book. And I asked the guys, um, 
hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna be interviewing this author. Do you have any questions? And one of the guys had a great question, and it was something that really grabbed us. His name's Doug Cole, and he said, you know, on your book on page 171, you have a phrase here, and uh, he's talked about to, you talk about to becoming a servant with Paul to fully surrender our lives to Jesus is to become a servant. Yeah. And one of the things I think men really struggle with is that surrender servant tension. Could you unpack that further for us? Why that is so critical? Yeah. Well, it uh, didn't start with us. Uh, you can read about it throughout the scriptures, right? I remember when Jesus was in the uh, upper room and he was telling the disciples about uh, what was going to happen to him? What's the next thing that happened? Uh, they uh, sort of an argument broke about out about which one of them is going to be the greatest, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is this propensity for people to uh, men, especially to want to do something great with their lives. And that's wonderful. But Jesus said the greatest among you will be like the one who serves. I am among you not uh, to be served. Uh, to serve, but to uh, to be served, but to serve. And so we might say this, that the chief test of a servant is whether or not you're willing to be treated like one. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 10, and, uh, and uh, told this little parable, he ended it up in 17, 10. And you, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So the idea in, in the life of Jesus is that greatness is achieved not by going up, but by going down. The way up is the way, the, the way up is down. Mm -hmm. So the mindset of a servant is something that's really worthwhile to pursue. Uh, it should be, you know, God first, then others, and then ourselves. We've all heard that paradigm before. Um, to fully surrender is, is to not partially surrender. It's to come to the foot of the cross. Now, um, it's been said that uh, conversion is to give as much of yourself as you can to as much of God as you can understand. So this, this idea of full surrender, it doesn't mean that 100% of it happens right away but that when we do come to jesus and we do want to follow him we do want to serve him we do want to be faithful it's this idea that right now at this moment men if you're listening can you say this with me based on what i understand at this moment i want to make a full total complete surrender of my life to the lordship of jesus christ and if you can't say that I, I want to do that, maybe you could say, Lord, I don't want to do it, but I want to want to do it and help me and help me. So the whole idea really is uh, <clears throat> in being a servant is to be found uh, faithful. It's to be found faithful. We could talk more about that in different ways if you want to. I don't want don't to spend the whole time on that one question. Whatever you want to share, we want to hear. I, I will. Um... You know, one of the things that a guy asked, Mitch Estep was asking about, you know, you said you had this Friday uh, men's study, yeah. this breakfast or something you had for, since 1986, which is quite a run. Um, there's guys across the country we come across, I'm sure I know you do as well, who just can't get men to to come to anything or do anything. And here you got longevity here. M Mitch Estep was asking, OK, what do you when you're looking back now on this, when you're looking at, you know, men's ministry, um, is there something you wish you would have done or something you would have modified as you're looking at equipping men and where we're at now in 2021 versus what happened in the mid eighties? No, uh, really the core affections of the human heart have not changed since the beginning of time. Cultures change, uh, current issues change, but uh, it's interesting. So <clears throat> what ha was happening 40 years ago and, what are, and what's happening today in the world are different. But what's happening in men's hearts is basically the same thing. Um, my wife and I, what was it we were talking about this morning? Um, oh, we were talking about podcasting. Well, you know, 40 years ago, uh, cassette tapes, people were riding around listening 
cassette tapes. Today, they're listening to your podcast. We're, we're, I was talking about getting ready for your podcast. And so the bottom line is, is that the, the, the need is the same. The delivery system is different. And so this is why men today can read the book of Ecclesiastes, which Solomon wrote 1,500 years ago, and feel like it's speaking right directly into their hearts. So I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, the idea is, is to bring the word of God to bear in an application relevant way to the current situations that men are, are facing. Um, and the reason I say that I wouldn't change a thing is we're a discipleship ministry, as are you. Making disciples is God's plan A to release the power of his gospel on every problem I face, on every problem you face, on every problem every man who watches or ever hears this podcast will ever face. It's, it's just making disciples. That's how God's power gets released. So men, whatever situation you find yourself in and however you got there, the only solution is to disciple your way out. So we're a discipleship ministry. Both of, both of us have discipleship ministries. That's the answer. I wouldn't do a thing differently. We've made the adjustments you know, to the cultural issues to try to be, remain relevant. But uh, yeah, no, what's kept us in the game is that we're taking this, this very old book and showing mm -hmm. men how it applies to these very real problems that they are facing. We were just talking about that last night in our small group that, you know, we, we think we're so advanced or we're so, you know, whatever, whatever we, we want to say in 2021, but you look at like when Moses was born, they were killing babies. Well, we, we have a similar situation. Jesus, right before he goes to the cross, there were authorities who believed in him, but really didn't want to say they did because they were afraid of being kicked out of the synagogue. There, there's just uh, again, like back to getting in the scripture, all those things are relevant today. And so our, unfortunately, we think we have to modify the message then. And what we need to do is just get back to scripture. Just that is a multi gener It doesn't matter if you're, if you got, you know, I got an eight-year-old son or an 80-year-old grandfather or whatever, it's get them to Jesus, right? Right, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, the principles in scripture are universal and they are timeless. Yeah, and that's was one of the big advantages of this book. While we had so many guys, we have guys that are all different ends of the spectrum, you know, on their journey of faith. Some of them are just getting started. Some of them have been believers maybe longer than I've been alive or whatever. But the point is, when you get people to scripture, it, it doesn't matter where they're at on that journey. You're, you're pointing them towards Christ and you're pointing them towards something that is that is timeless. And when we when we try to add things to it or try to add bells and whistles or you know pretty up truth all we need to do is just just present it just reveal it and and I, what do you say to those guys who and they're struggling to get men to show up in you know two three four guys to sit around a table and talk about jesus because they just don't want to do it how do you how do you breathe life into them or encourage them to remain faithful and focused well, let me tell you <clears throat> just about our case study, okay? I can't speak for everybody else, but I can tell you what's worked for us. Number one <clears throat> is that we are intentional in everything that we do. We're very strategic and intentional. From the uh, greeter at the door to the sign out front that welcomes visitors to the sign over the door so people know where to actually walk into the room, you know? Uh, to the coffee, to the uh, pastries or whatever else we have going on and, and all the logistics and so forth. We're, we're very intentional to create a warm uh, and a welcoming environment so that men feel comfortable when they get there. It's a place that they want to come. Number two, <clears throat> the, the, we have a leadership group. I think everything boils down to leadership. We have table leaders. So we have 20 tables. Each table has a leader. And I have a, uh, literally have a written job description for the table leaders. And each table leader has to renew that one-year contract in January every year. 
I, I joke uh, around, it's just a joke, but it's kind of serious too, that I essentially fire all the leaders every December 31st, they're fired. They have to reapply for the job. And why do we do that? Well, the reason we do that, I've been in, in a lot of informal organizations before, and most of them don't have an exit strategy for when leaders get tired and burned out. So what that does is it gives us an opportunity once a year for all, every leader to reevaluate themselves in nine areas, their nine responsibilities on their job description. And so, Jared, I actually have them rate themselves on a scale one, two, three, or four in each of those nine areas. Four means very faithful. Three means mostly faithful. Two means somewhat faithful and one means not faithful. So I, I don't believe that God calls us to be uh, uh, successful or to produce a particular outcome. I think what God calls us to do is to be faithful. If we will be faithful, then he will do what he is going to do. So it, I don't ask them to rate their success or their performance, but I do wanna know, have you been faithful? And then every now and then, once every 10 years or so, somebody has a bunch of ones and twos. And so then I sit down and I have a conversation with them. And typically what happens, oh man, I'm so sorry. I got involved in this big project at work, but you know, I'm really in the deal and I really want to keep going. Keep, you know, let, 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 please, please let me continue. Uh, I mean, maybe two or three times, you know, we've had somebody say, okay, well, my time is up, you know, and then they, it's, but then we can celebrate them moving on. You know what? One of the big things uh, that happens in a lot of organizations is a leader doesn't perform for two or three years, and and uh, and everybody gets mad. And by the time they leave, you know, it's it's a nasty, unchristian mess. So instead, we kind of celebrate it when somebody has uh, so leadership, and 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 then uh, everything boils down to leadership. Be intentional. Everything boils down to leadership. And then the, the main role is of the leaders is to really communicate to the men that I care about you personally and where you are in your spiritual journey. No agenda, but God here and what he would have for your life. Uh, I think uh, probably uh, so intentionality, leadership, love. <clears throat> and then it does help to have a good message. <laughs> you know, uh, men, but I, like I say, men will come, uh, they will come the first time to hear a good message, but they will keep coming back if they're able to build relationships together at a table with some other guys. And so that's the final piece of it is uh, relationships with other guys uh, where you get a chance to really unpack what God is saying in his word. And I get, I know God is real because I can see him in you. I think there's there's great value in that because we tell guys every man has something to add to the conversation. You know, every guy has a story. If we are created in the image of God, there there's a reflection there. There's something there. But every man also has a wealth of knowledge they can take from that table as well. So I come to the table knowing I have something I can add to the conversation. I don't have to be the most talkative guy or the dominated, but I need to be mindful. I have something to add but I got plenty to take away. And when guys come to those things just to take away, then they really shortchange the rest of the guys around the table because we didn't get from you what God has been doing in you. And the same is true when you come to that table thinking, well, I'm going to dominate this thing and tell everyone, you know, how to be a man. Um, God works in a very, I'm oh, sorry, circular manner, you know, that, that shoulder to shoulder kind of thing that men are about. And it sounds like with your table leaders, you've created that environment where the guy's there to initiate conversation and you can't help but grow when you get around better guys like that. Yeah, in fact, we're not even looking for leaders who are teachers. We're looking for leaders who are shepherds. They don't need a teacher. They've just heard a, 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 a short Bible teaching now, uh, so they don't need to have that retaught to them. What they need is a shepherd, somebody who will pull them out. And so we're looking for men. In fact, we have a rule, uh, airtime for every man every week. And then another rule, if you're the leader, you shouldn't be talking more than 25% of the time, period. I'm stealing it. I love that. 
I love that. Well, we would be remiss if we didn't get into the fact you have a new book releasing. Is it today? Yeah. Today, today, um, the four voices taking control of the conversations in your head. Oh my word. This book's about 45 years too late for me, but Hey, it's coming out to, this is, this is so critical, not only for men, but for women, but we're talking to the guys right now. So just tell us what you want us to know about this to start us off. Well, first of all, it, it, uh, it, it is a book that the target audience of the book could be men or women. But I especially, you know, want to uh, speak to, into the lives of men who are in their 20s, 30s, and early 40s. When, you know, it's, it's I, sometimes a shame, I, I've been saying recently, it, it's, a shame, it's a shame I have to die. I was just starting to get it figured out. <laughs> But here's, here's the big idea on the book. <clears throat> so we all know that we have a running conversation with ourselves all day long. We call it self-talk. And we need self-talk. That's how we take all the little bits and pieces of everyday life and fit them together into some kind of a congruent story. However, we are not the only voice in that conversation. There are four other voices that are constantly exerting themselves to influence what we think, say, and do. The four voices in your head are the world, the flesh, the devil, and the Holy Spirit. Your job is to figure out which voice is speaking and take control of the conversation. So that's the big picture of the book. I think the timing of this book is perfect. I know I said 40 years too late, but um, I'm just reading a phrase here that you have here that not mastering these voices will eat away at your self-worth, poison your relationships, stunt your growth as a person, limit how you grow in life. And you'll often find yourself going to bed angry, waking up in the middle of the night and panic. And I think after what we've just gone through in the last year and reading through scripture, a year is nothing. People went through it for four decades. So after what we have gone through and are going through, this is critical to understand listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm hearing from countless people who are saying, I'm waking up in the middle of the night, you know, I'm just not eating right, or I'm just not. And how do we start to, how do we start to take back and be mindful of this is the voice. This is the voice we hear. We know the shepherd's voice uh, because we are his sheep. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, <clears throat> If you're trying to solve the wrong problem, you can only succeed by accident. So understanding what, what's going on in the first place is a huge part of the uh, solution. So what I have wanted to, to do in this book is help men and women <clears throat> understand. So the, the, the world, the flesh and the devil, these three voices, uh, often overlap, offer, often interact with each other, and rail against the uh, principles of your Christian faith. So what I've done is instead, instead of talking them it, like in one message, uh, as one thing in one message, I wanted to parse them out. So I've, I pulled them out and, uh, and so we can examine each one. Now, after we get done, it slips back into this morass of everyday life. But I, what I wanted to do is help men be able to understand, okay, what is the voice of the world? What does it sound like? Uh, and, then, and then probably most importantly, what can you do to master that voice, to get control of that voice, to take control of that particular voice uh, so you can recognize it? but then take control of it. So I've included, uh, in addition to the, 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 the knowledge, uh, a, a lot of tools, disciplines, virtues, and practices, 27 of them in all, uh, scattered throughout the book. And then also finally some discussion and reflection questions so guys could do this in groups together as well. I, and that last part is critical. I think it's important to 
walk through i've read a lot of great books but there's just something different about reading the book when yeah. other guys are i'm not looking necessarily for a book club but i'm looking to have iron sharpening iron and yeah. some guy will extrapolate something you said on page 10 that i was thinking about something on 15 and and it's just it it just awakens something in our heart when we do this and as you said making sure you get around the right voices because there are the wrong voices as well I think it's, was it first John one, nine talking about the, the world being under the influence of the evil one, you know? And so understanding what these voices are saying to us, why that's um, what that's doing to us internally, that we have to guard our heart above all things. Yeah. And um, so you said there's 27 practices. Is that what you said? Well, uh, so each chapter at the end of each chapter, I've included different spiritual disciplines, uh, different uh, virtues and practices. Um, and uh, I talk about when we get to the chapter on the voice of the devil, uh, I review the armor of God that has been given to us in Ephesians chapter six, and uh, then how to apply those things to our, to our lives. And that's good. That's good. So that's out today, and you can get it Amazon, I assume, your website. Uh, yeah, you can get it at uh, either place. Uh, so uh, I, this is kind of a fun story. Um, so I, my publishers have been uh, Harper Collins and Penguin and uh, Zondervan, Multnomah, uh, and uh, but uh, we, one of our focuses at Man in the Mirror this year and through uh, 2025 is to create a platform for new thinkers and writers to be able to express themselves in the area of men's discipleship. So Christian publishing, publishing in general has morphed a lot over these last few years. And now basically publishers, I don't mean to make this sound like a pejorative, but they pretty much let people know the book is available, but it's up to the author to do the marketing. So from my standpoint, um, I got the thought, well, why don't we, what, if we want to have a, help it establish a platform for new thinkers and writers, why don't we go ahead in the middle of a pandemic, why don't we go ahead and start a publishing company? So doggone it, that's exactly what we've done. So, uh, this book, the four voices taking control of the conversation in your head is being published by MIM press, which is our new publishing company. So it goes uh, up on uh, Amazon and then also can be purchased uh, at our website, which is maninthemirror.org, uh, individual copies. But uh, Jarrett also in cases of 12 and 48. So our Books by the Box program, we've distributed over the years uh, over 10 million books through our Books by the Box program. And so people can buy a case of 48 of these books for, uh, don't hold me to it, but I think it's $79, 48 books for $79 plus shipping. So they can be used, distributed in churches to your friends and small groups and so forth. Uh, so we just, our, our objective is to build the kingdom and get the word out. So I'm, if you're watching this, I'm laughing on the other end because, um, I'm, I got a stack of 40 some books over here for our next session of tribe. And I primarily go through Amazon and going so many, I wish I would have known about books by the box. Oh, you can get um, how God makes men and books by the box for almost nothing. <laughs> so I just, I just died a little on the inside. Oh um, man, well, maybe you can just send it back if you have prime. <laughs> well, no, uh, we, we've already used all the books, so. oh, you've used them all, okay. <laughs> but, um, but I, I will, I'm going to put that right here where I can see that. Um, I, I didn't know that, but other guys that are listening to this now, you do know, you can save yeah. yourself a lot of time and heartache and, uh, money, money. but, uh, man in the mirror real quick. I, I should have probably let off with that. Can you tell us what that is? And, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, I started a Bible study in a bar in 1986. And we ended up calling it uh, the Man in the Mirror Bible Study. I wrote a book out of that Bible study in 1989 called The Man in the Mirror. Uh, that book I updated uh, at, and, at its 25-year anniversary, so in 2014. I've written a total of 22 books, uh, the four voices here. That's, that's book number uh, 22. 
Um, and then things began to happen, spin out of that. So we started doing seminars in churches. We've done 1,300 church seminars. We've had over 100,000 men go through those seminars. 80% uh, of the men who go through the seminars go uh, into small groups. We have a, uh, uh, we have a, a, uh, a, a, a model, a discipleship model for churches called No Man Left Behind. It's based on a book, No Man Left Behind. And it's a, a model for churches to both create fresh momentum with their guys, but also then to capture and sustain that momentum. Uh, and then uh, we uh, have started recently uh, in the pandemic, we also started a thing called Mirror Labs, which is an R&D operation to develop new thoughts and tools to reach guys in their 20s and 30s. And we have a, a, a director for that. We have an international division. So we're, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I have books published in 48 countries. So we have friends all over the world. And now we have ministry. Now we have small groups going all over the world as well. Basically, up, upshot is the, the vision of man in the, ch uh, man in the mirror is for every church to disciple every man. Our mission is to uh, help leaders create a discipleship pathway for every man in their church. That's what we do. We help leaders create discipleship pathways for every man in the church. We've worked with uh, we've worked with thirty five thousand churches all together, and uh, millions of men. So, and we'd love we'd love to help you all in any way we can. Everything we have uh, is 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 available either at no cost or uh, or or below cost. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm saying that because we raise a lot of money to, to subsidize everything we do. And, uh, but it's a king, we have a kingdom building mindset, not a ministry building mindset. So we'd love to help you and any of your men in any way we can. Uh, we do a weekly blog, uh, which can be subscribed to. We do this weekly Bible study. We do it online. We've been doing it that online since the year 2000. We have thousands of men all over the world that attend the weekly Bible study, and there's a reminder email for that with a link. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing some things, but that's the gist of it. If you, I mean, I know that's your, your heart. You've been doing this for a long time, but as, as you were saying that, just to think about the church where I serve, if, if every man was discipled in that or being discipled in that, that church, it completely changes yeah. every address, every marriage, every kid, you would never have to beg people to be in ministry ever again. You wouldn't have to shepherding would, would become nil because life on life would just become, well, what it was supposed to be. And, um, I, I, I just, that's God's desire for our churches. I mean, that, that and then men go home and disciple their wife and kids. I, I just can't, I mean, that that's, that's exciting. That's the model, isn't it? That's, that's exciting. The model. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. God's got a good idea with that. So, Hey, Patrick, uh, I don't want to keep any longer. I want to thank you for, for taking time. You've been so uh, gracious to me, uh, easy to work with. And this is one of my favorite conversations. How do, um, how do men get in touch with, with you, what you're doing, this book that's releasing today? Where can they find all this? Well, I think the best place is to start at maninthemirror.org, our website, and my contact information is there. Or, or you can just send me an email, Patrick Morley at maninthemirror.org. Uh, yeah, and so um, uh, information on all of our resources, all of our free stuff. Uh, free, free is a terrible word because it sure wasn't free. I paid a huge price for most of this stuff. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I'm giving things away too. I understand. You're like, no, nah, there was a cost there, but um, yeah, don't tell your wife it was free. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Most of most of my best illustrations have to do with something that went wrong there. <laughs> that's what I've, I'm. I'm rarely the hero of any story I ever tell. It's it's just it's just not the way it goes for me. But yeah. so, man in the mirror. That's what we're gonna. I'm gonna put a, the links below this podcast. Yeah. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever, you're gonna see a link to uh, the book as well. So make it easy. I like it easy, uh, simple. And uh, man, I want to encourage you to do that. I am definitely gonna get in that book and. Uh, I think in the near future, be leading some guys through that resource. So Patrick, thank you, brother. Thank you for being on the same team. Thank you for what you're doing for men. Um, man, we, we need more of that.
I thank you for what you're doing as well. And uh, brothers, you and me. Amen. Yep.